Hello everyone, it's GigaBeef here, and today we're going to find out the weapon that is the most accurate in the whole of Escape from Tarkov. Historically, this question hasn't been that important, but in 1212 and onwards, the Lighthouse map has brought a whole new meaning to long-distance sniping, with rogues and long-range combat becoming much more popular on this location. So, how do we go about determining this? For us, MOA, or Minute of Angle, which is how Tarkov represents the accuracies of its weapons, is visible within the stats of each gun. With this number, first and foremost, we want the lowest we can get. This is because MOA represents a possible spread of rounds when firing at the same point, and we want the smallest spread, so the lowest MOA figure. In a mathematical sense, a minute of angle is, like it sounds, a measurement of an angle. This represents 1 60th of a degree, which is pretty small, and when you work through the calculation, this is approximately equal to 1 inch at 100 yards, or 2.9 centimeters at 100 meters. As it says on the wiki, Tarkov's display of MOA represents the radius of the circle that your shots will land within, meaning that if you have a weapon with an MOA of 1, you'd expect your shot to land somewhere within a circle 6 centimeters across at 100 meters, 12 centimeters across at 200 meters, and so on. This is the reason why most of the time MOA doesn't really matter in Tarkov. A stock M4 has an MOA of 1.91, so at 100 meters you'll be hitting in a circle 11.5 centimeters across. With the average human head at 15 centimetres, you'll need to be about 150 metres away before this circle starts to become larger, allowing you to get accurate headshots all the way up until that point. Well, in theory at least, anyway. As players of Tarkov, we're very used to the mods that affect recoil and ergonomics, but the parts that give us better accuracy are sometimes a little more subtle. The most obvious are the weapons themselves, which set the starting accuracy, and then barrels, which have a very large impact too, with longer being better almost always. Barrels have a kind of inbuilt MOA that is listed on them specifically, but there are a small handful that also have an accuracy stat on top, most notably for the SA-58, which makes the long barrel version of these weapons surprisingly accurate. Different muzzles can also have some small impact, but nothing groundbreaking, with the most that you can get on many weapons being 4% unsuppressed on the 2AX3 for 7.62 NATO, or the Vendetta Precision for 5.56, and 2% suppressed with the Gemtech 1 or the SRD. Some suppressors even remove accuracy, so although the Knight's muzzle break gives 3% on its own, the suppressor itself takes back 2 for 1% overall. Finally, we have a few other random parts such as specific stocks, buffer tubes, and handguards. The most famous of these is the red ARE tube, because it's one of those find in raid only flex items which gives 5% better MOA and a little better round velocity than its regular counterpart, and fits to well used weapons like the M4. Along with this, we have three bolt action stocks, two for the M700 with the AICS being the best, and another for the Mosin. There are three handguards that I didn't realise gave accuracy until making this video, which are the AR-15 Lone Star Iron Light and the AR-10 Knight's Armament URX 14.5 inch handguards for 1% each. The Mark 18 handguard counts too I guess, but you can only attach it to the Mark 18, so it's a bit pointless to include really. There's one more that is super random, and it's this specific USP pistol slide that gives 5% accuracy too. Weird, yes, I found it funny that it was included. So now that we've looked through all the parts, choosing some high accuracy weapons is not too hard. Clearly, we'll likely find our top performer in the bolt action snipers, but DMRs and assault rifles can be contenders too in some circumstances. Within the Balties, we have six choices if we consider the Mosins together. We can't do anything to the VPO really, which is our 366 chambered bolt action. It's good for budget, but at 1.55 MOA unsuppressed and 1.58 suppressed, it isn't going to top any charts here. The Mosin Sniper and the Mosin Infantry are the same, both starting at 1.31 MOA. If we do everything we can, which is an Archangel stock and an X3 on the adapter, we can get it to 1.21, which is not much of an improvement, and suppressed is actually worse at 1.24 with the Gemtech. Our next rifle is the Orsis T5000. With a starting MOA of 0.65, now we're getting somewhere. However, it's all bespoke parts, so all we can do is add an X3 again for 0.63 minimum MOA and 0.64 with the Gemtech, although this turns out to be the second best suppressed accuracy overall. In third place is the SV-98, with a default MOA of 0.55, which is really good. This can be improved to 0.52 with the SRVV muzzle, and suppressed gets to 0.56 MOA. Although this is not the best accuracy overall, it is worth pointing out here that 0.56 appears to be the lowest that you can get while suppressed across all weapons. This is very useful when sniping, and most players will insist on using a suppressor when doing so for obvious reasons. In second, we have the M700. This weapon is super modular with the AICS stock that we talked about before, giving accuracy improvements along with the 26-inch barrel. 
Interestingly, you cannot attach anything to this barrel at all, so although you can get to 0.7 MOA with this setup unsuppressed, to suppress the weapon you have to drop down to the 20 inch barrels instead, and have to use either the T-Lock, the Gemtech or the SRD to get it to 0.71. Given that we don't really care about recoil, the Gemtech gives the most ergonomics of the three. You can also go for the Mod X stock instead and use the red ARE tube that we talked about earlier as this also gets to 0.712, but it's a bit unnecessary and the other way is easier. So finally, in first place we have the DVL. This guy comes out of the box with 0.45 MOA, which is the lowest that we have seen across all the snipers. However, as most players run this suppressed, you need to have the special integrated barrel version for this. The MOA here gets changed quite a bit, back up to 0.76, still very good but beaten by a few of the others in their suppressed configurations. Before we move on to a few honourable mentions, we need to have a quick look at ammo. Within 7.62x54R and 51 NATO, there are some bullets with accuracy stats too. For the SV98, PS ammo gives a 10% accuracy bonus, taking the unsuppressed version from 0.52 to 0.47 and the suppressed version from 0.56 to 0.51. This is pretty cool because although PS isn't the best ammo in the world, it is at least usable and it's nice to get an accuracy bonus on a bullet that players use regularly anyway. For 7.62 NATO, Ultra Nosler, M993 and M61 all give accuracy bonuses of 10, 5 and 3. The only issue here is that no one would sensibly use Ultra Nosler because of its terrible pen value of 15. However, for science, the unsuppressed DVL can get to 0.41 with this round inside, which is the lowest MOA that I can find in the whole of Tarkov. Now, there are a few weapons that deserve an honourable mention. The first off being the Mark 18 Mjolnir, currently Tarkov's only 338 Lapur weapon. I don't have access to this in 1212 because you need to kill Sturman 25 times, but Deranger in my Discord kindly provided this to me as it's got a starting MOA of 0.57, which is actually kind of amazing. Currently all we can do is add the red ARE tube to get it to 0.54, but we know that in the next patch this weapon will be getting a suppressor, along with another Lapur weapon being added which is a bolty, so watch this space and maybe there will be some new attachments too for the existing Mark 18. The next one is the RSAS, with the X3 muzzle, red ARE tube and the URX4 handguard, this can get to 0.71 unsuppressed and 0.73 suppressed, which is definitely up there with the bolt action rifles. Compared to the SR25 and the M1A, which when optimised get to around the 1 MOA region, it's just in that next tier up. Very little in the 5.56 calibre is really amazing, even the TX15 DML with a Vendetta Precision, Iron Light Handguard and the red ARE tube on the longest barrel only gets to 1.04 MOA. This is pretty much the same for the 5.45 weapons too, in fact even worse because you can't change over the barrels and the base MOA is not amazing. However, the RPK with its long barrel stands out at a 1.1 MOA. On its own, this is nothing too crazy, but the interesting thing about this calibre is that you can use the 7N40 round which has a plus 50% accuracy. This takes the MOA down from 1.1 to 0.73 which is on par with the RSAS. The final point to note before we go regarding long range shooting is that each weapon has a default ammo that zeroing works for. Be very careful if deviating from this round. Currently this causes zeroing to be more or less off depending on how different the fired round is from this default one. For more information, see this video here. As usual, a big shout out to all my patrons, hit all the buttons if you enjoyed the video, and as always, have fun in your raids.